All right, what's up guys? This is Rob here from The Beer Club and we're back with Before the Beard. This is episode four. And next to me, I have Chris Rosario. Chris, what's up, man? How's it going, man? We've kind of been chatting a little bit on Instagram for a little while. Mm -hmm. We have some common friends in your band, Northstone band, guitarist Rob D. Shout out to Rob D. My man. Him and I went to high school together, so that's kind of our common thread. But let's introduce everyone to you. So kind of give us who you are, where you're from. My name is Chris Rosario, 34 years young. I yeah. am a career man in the wood finishing industry. Nice. I also am a drummer in the rock band called Norris Stone. Yeah. Rock out. Yeah. Love those guys. Um, and I also have been, uh, been on my fitness journey for the past like 12 to 15 years, awesome. going from a fat kid to as strong and jacked as I can be. Nice. And that's yeah. where we're at. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on and talk to you. Cause I too was a fat kid <laughs> and, and went on a journey. I see you, man. Listen, Making I mean, some gains. You know, trying, bro, trying. But you know, that was a that was one of the topics that I want definitely want to get into now. Is you know, how did that start? So like, you know, when I I know when I was younger, you know, my parents are great parents, but they didn't have any like health. They didn't where they weren't educated on health and how to eat right. You know, so I never had a good education on what was good food, what was bad food. You know, so was it something like that? Like, how do you? Why do you think? you were raised that way. Like, I know why I was, but why do you think you were? And then kind of, what was your catalyst to transition? Yeah, so very similar situation. Pretty much everyone in my family is overweight. Um, nobody's really like in shape. And uh, when I was younger, we would go to my grandmother's a lot. And when we would go to my grandmother's, she would buy us whatever we wanted in the supermarket. Yep. Chips, donuts, cakes, pizza, whatever. And we ate it all. Me and my sisters, we would eat it all. My sisters, they're good, they didn't really get too big, yeah. but I packed on the pounds pretty quick. Um, so did that for many years and then kind of just got older, didn't know anything about nutrition, didn't yeah. really occur to me. I was just kind of eating whatever I wanted, how I wanted. And then, funny story, I went on a cruise with my family. Oof. And yeah. The so danger you, zone, You bro. would think, yeah, <laughs> buffets, eat whatever you yeah, want, yeah, whenever yeah. you want, but, Day one, I'm like just taking a tour of the cruise ship and they had a gym and the gym overlooked the like the ocean and it had this beautiful view. So without even thinking about it, I just kind of went in there blindly and just I just started doing cardio. Like mm -hmm. I was just on the elliptical and I way overdid it. I would be on there for <laughs> an hour and a half yeah, yeah. and I thought, OK, so this is I started to lose a little bit of weight yeah. on that cruise. And oh, I was nice. like. That's so you saw, very you saw results right away. Yeah. On the cruise. Oh yeah. Oh, well, nice. I was also not eating properly. I okay, yeah, yeah. barely ate. Yeah. I, you know, and there's disorders with that. But I, um, I just kind of was always doing cardio, and ate whatever I want still. But I would eat once a day, and that's not. And it wasn't anything good. It was right, like still right. something heavy, like pasta or like sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. And then over the course of like the next six to seven years, I started getting more and more into fitness. And then I would kind of do more research. Right. And I was like, oh, well, if I start to eat this way, rather than starve myself, I can get better results. Because right. I used to think the way to get shredded was you just don't eat. Yeah. Like, and that's- And just work out like an animal. Yeah, 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 yeah. and that's not what happened. I yeah. ended up, yeah, yeah. I lost a lot of weight, but I ended up being very skinny fat. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but that wasn't what I wanted. Right. I wanted, you know, I saw dudes like Arnold Schwarzenegger when we were kids, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and. Conan and shit. Yeah. Um, so started researching more and then I started learning, okay, you want to build muscle, you have to lift, start lifting weights. So I started doing that. And even when I started doing that, I didn't have the knowledge I have now. And I just kind of was doing whatever, you know, bench every day, arms mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. didn't really see results. And then I'd say within the past like five years, I like kind of fine tuned how I wanted to train. So you want to, you know, get stronger at certain lifts. So you doing a lot of like big power lifts. Exactly, and I love power lifting. And that's where I saw the most gains is compound movements. Cause everyone, you see guys at like Planet Fitness and they're just doing curls on the machine or they do the chest press mm -hmm. machine and that's fine. Like, yeah, it's all good. That's, that's good. But a lot of those guys, and I know cause they've asked me about it and they want to put on a lot of muscle. And it's like, well, those machines have their place, but really you want to focus on compound movements like mm -hmm. squats and bench and deadlifts and stuff like that because it uses the most muscles in your body. Yep. So then once I started getting stronger at those, I was like, oh, I finally saw my body starting to change yep. how I wanted to. So I just continued that, kind of fine-tuned some things. 
And then ever since then, I've just been working on getting stronger. So did you ever, because I, I had like kind of a similar story, like, right, I was in high school, you know, being a fat kid, you don't, you never really get the attention from the ladies that you want, especially mm -hmm. in high school, right? Oh, definitely not. So in high I was school. like, well, this is not working. <laughs> I got to change up something. So I just started going to the gym with my buddies and they were all like just skinny dudes and just were able to put on muscle like that. And that's not my body type. So I'm like benching, doing all this stuff and ended up gaining weight. And I'm like, wait a second. I just came to this place to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I'm 10 pounds up, right? So I had to like learn to like, then go back to cardio and all that. So did you ever like figure out your body type or did you just kind of start just testing the waters with different workouts and then you just start results? Did you ever do anything like that or? So like you hear like, oh, if you're an ectomorph, a mesomorph and like there's some value to that, but yeah. really everybody's body is different and you, it, it's cliche to say, but you really have to find what works for you. And I've tried so many different like methods of uh, training. Like I tried CrossFit for a little bit, tried bodybuilding, powerlifting, obviously. Um, I was a cardio bunny and like that's, no, yeah. you don't want to do that if you want to build muscle. Uh, yeah. But cardio is very important too because yeah. the heart is a very important muscle yeah. as well. So especially guys, as we get older. You exactly. Get the very, heart rate yeah, up. Yep. especially as we get older. Yeah. So I just kind of kept going and seeing what worked and then I would spin my wheels for years. That's the, the crappy part. Did you ever fall off? Like I've gone up and down, up and down, up and down. And always stayed healthier than I, what I, from where I started. But did, did you ever go back to where you were? Did you flux or did you just kind of like figure it out and then you plateau? Because I, I feel so, like a lot of guys struggle with that too. Yeah. So I, so once I lost all the weight, I started, I, I know I needed to eat in order to put on muscle. Like you have to. Um, so I ended up putting on a lot more fat than I wanted to because guys think, okay, I want to put on muscle. Let me bulk and eat whatever the hell I want. Yeah. And some people can get away with that. I feel like people like us, we put on weight easily. We got to yeah. be careful. Yeah. You know, you eat too much. Definitely. You're going to put on way more fat than you need to and want to. So that's what I did for a while. And then, so I basically, I went from 185 to 205, like over the course of maybe eight months. And that's once I got good. to 205, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, Okay, I look kind of jacked in a shirt, but if I take my shirt off, I got a, I got a gut. Like, yeah, and that's, yeah. you know, you, it, you go to the gym because you want to look better, you want to feel better. Yeah. And like, I got a little stronger, but not enough to be like, oh, this was kind of worth it. So I ended up like dieting back down and you fall into this cycle of bulking and cutting. And a lot of guys think I'll eat whatever I want, put on all this muscle and then I'll diet it off later. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you something, <laughs> you don't put on as much muscle as you thought you did. Yeah. And when you end up leaning out and cutting down, you're like, okay, I look okay without my shirt on, but yeah. in a shirt now, I don't even look like I right. lift. Right. So that's a problem I struggled with for so many years. And honestly, it probably wasn't until like maybe a year ago that I started seeing myself, at least in my eyes, yeah. like I look at myself in the mirror and like, okay, I look like I lift, yeah. Yeah. you know? And if something finally clicked and that's when I knew that I was on the right path with my training and my nutrition nice. kept going. And then a year later, it got even better. And, you know, and as we get older, it gets a little harder, but you don't Bro, give up. Talk about it. Keep going, man. Dude, I'm still trying to work off the five empanadas from a month ago. It's just like <laughs> back in the day, you just like eat pizza. Then you go the next day to the gym, just work it out and you're good to go. And now it's like, I'm still living with my choices mm -hmm. from the summer. Even when it's I have my, my pizza on Sunday, it, it literally <laughs> takes me till Wednesday to like bounce yeah, back. Yeah, like I'm yeah. so bloated. I'm yeah. like, oh, I love pizza. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's balance, it. man. It's all about balance. Definitely is all about balance. So when did the, so now like obviously a lot of guys get into shape and because they want to look better, they want a better, you know, they want more self-esteem. They want to be able to look at themselves and be more confident. So how did, when did the beard started to come into this equation here? I know when it came in for me, but when did it come in for you? So I've always rocked some sort of facial hair. Okay. Um, I, and, and I hate the term clean shaven because I once heard that if you say clean shaven, it implies that if you have a beard, you're dirty. Yeah, or if you don't clean shave, oh, you're dirty. Yeah. So no, it's just, I always had some sort of stubble. Or, right. And it would, uh, it would vary to how long my beard was. Um, but ever, I'd say probably three, four years ago, I started growing it a bit longer. And this is pretty much how I've been rocking it. It's been a little longer, a little shorter, but for the most part, this is how it is. And it, ladies like, Dudes with beards, let's be real. Yeah, I mean, hey, 
It's the it truth. adds a little something, you it know. It does. It adds a little sauce. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel did you feel like a a confidence boost or did you feel different when you started really like rocking and this become like became your new look? So yes and no. So when I started transitioning into like a thicker, bigger beard, this was before I knew about like oils and washes and conditioners and, and brushes and stuff like that. So I would have a beard, but it would just be crazy, like all over, <laughs> yeah. scraggly, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So then once I, how the hell did I even, I think I was just like on Amazon one day and like something, like an ad popped up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe I should try to take care of this. Like you, you do with your hair. Yeah. And I never had good hair on top of my head. I, I'm bald <laughs> as it is, all right? Um, so started washing it, conditioning it, put uh, you know oils in, started right. brushing it. And it was like a night and night day and different. Day. Yeah. Night yeah. and day difference, man. Yeah, same thing for me. I look back at like my first couple of beards and I was just like, oh. Mm -hmm. I was like, I why did to I take them off the like internet? Like, yeah. But you know, it's a live and learn. That's but, what it is, man. It's all learning experience. Yeah, exactly. So now the other common thread is, well, I say common thread because I want to feel cool, but we both played in bands. I played mm -hmm. it much longer ago. You made it a profession. So how did, how did North Stone, what was like, how did you get started in like, in, and he's a drummer guys, so how did you get started like drumming, like how did, how did this whole thing come about? So I was 16 years old, so as a, let me back up a little bit. When I was a kid, I'd always like play with straws, bang, and like bang on things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I was 16, I got my first kit, started practicing, took a couple of lessons, but it, for whatever reason, didn't appeal to me, but I loved playing. So I kind of, I'm basically self-taught, and uh, I started a couple bands, and just throughout my entire life since I was 16, 34 now, playing in all different types of bands, wow. all different types of genres, um, and shout out to our boy Rob D. Yep. I've been playing with him for, my God, f what feels like my life, dude. Really? So, oh yeah, like literally every band I've been in, he's been in pretty much, <laughs> like no shit. Um, so then, so Norris Stone, fast forward. So about 2014, uh, Rob asked me, because they had a previous drummer, it wasn't working out. I was living in the city, I wasn't doing anything musically. So he was like, hey, you wanna try out, try out for the band, and you know, hopefully we could play music yeah, together again. Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah, man. Gave me three songs, learned the songs, tried out, worked out really well. Nice. Started playing with them for a while. Um, and then around 2000, I wanna say 16. So I, w I have a career, as I mentioned before, yeah. I work in the city. And at the time I was living in the city, so it was, it was a very hard commute. We would go up to New Windsor, which is yeah. like near Newburgh, and it's a crazy commute. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did that for a little while, and then it, I got a phone call one day from our singer, and he was like, you know what, man, I'm sorry, but it's not working out. And I kind of saw it coming because we would book shows like on a Wednesday in like mm. Connecticut or something, or like on a Monday night in Pennsylvania. And I'm oh, like, man. I have, like, I, dude, I got work. Like, I can't yeah, really yeah, swing yeah. that. So it just, timing wasn't right. Yeah. So I ended up getting kicked out for lack of a better word. <laughs> um, so I ended up moving back to Rockland around 2018. And they were on hiatus at that point because everyone kind of, moved on, they you know, got yeah, married, yeah. some yeah. have kids, yeah. and nobody was trying to make it a career anymore. It was right. more so just like a, like a fun hobby. Thing. Yeah, exactly. So Rob D again, he hit me up. He's like, you wanna to try to get this going again? I said, yeah, but like understand, I can't commit right. to like that crazy shows. It's like, no dude, like we all have jobs now and it's, it's yeah, a different yeah. story. Yeah. So then came back, started playing again, and now we're here, man. We cranked out a 12 song record. That was really stressful. So when I came back into the band, they wanted to drop a, a full length record. So I'm like, hell yeah, let's do this. But they had like riffs written, right. but nothing fully structured. So for six months, we buckled down, wrote 12 songs, recorded it, and it came out really, really well. Actually ended up being top uh, top 50 on the metal charts on iTunes. It was number 47. Wow. Yeah, we like passed Volbeat. And uh, motionless and white. Wow, it's pretty crazy. I mean, that's that's, a, that's an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty surreal. And we're not yeah. even like a metal band. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. So and then um, did a couple other EPs, and now we're here, just you know, playing shows for yeah, fun. Yeah, you guys have gone on some cool tours and played yeah. with some big guys. Played right? with a lot of big names, like yeah, Chiodos, Bless the Fall. Uh, we just we played with He Is Legend not long ago while she sleeps. So those were 
fun, fun ass shows. Nice, nice. So what's the future for Nora Stone? Uh, we, well, we actually, we have a new uh, music video coming out soon that we recorded uh, yeah, about a month you ago. You actually filmed, uh, shout out to Mike Piccarello. Yes, he, yeah, yeah. He, he, he actually did our Damn Millennials video and he was as well. the drummer in our old band. Get out of yeah, here. Yeah. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, my favorite drummer. I played rhythm and guitar. Fat man John Hernandez was weed and tricks was uh, on bass. Rockland County, man. Small Gotta world. That's how it is. <laughs> but yeah, he, he did uh, our video. He's awesome to work with. Yeah, he's great. Um, that video should be dropping soon. Nice. And uh, yeah, for the future, just play as much as we can. I mean, with the whole COVID thing, who knows what's yeah. going on. Yeah, it's crazy what's happening. But uh, do what we can, you know? Nice. All right, so we're going to transition a little bit. I do have a gift for you. Ooh, I like gifts. But before we get to that, we gotta ask you some questions. Okay. You ready? Fire them at me. All right. What is, and this is gonna be great because you're a musician. What is one song that you know every single word to? When it comes on the radio, you just sing it no matter who's around, but you are 100% embarrassed to say Ooh. that you know it. Uh, I mean, I guess it's not that embarrassing, but <laughs> Lady Gaga's Poker Face. There you go. Like, I don't, I don't know what, why that <laughs> That's song. A good answer. And I think it's because, like, I heard a, like, I heard the song, I heard a sick cover, and then I just fell in love with the song even more. So it was just like, oh, anytime Lady Gaga came on the radio, I would just belt it, belt it out, man. I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right. If you were to own a boat, what would be the name of your boat? Oh, because it's got to be like SS something, right? Is that what it is? It, it's your boat, bro. I'm calling it Scorpion Rose because that's my nickname. Ooh. Scorpion, Scorpion Rose, Rose your nickname. Rose. Okay. Break from the questions. How is Scorpion Rose your nickname? Oh, man. Okay. You brought it up. So, I did. You're right. <laughs> We're opening that can of worms. So, Rob D, right? So, my, my childhood bud, um, we, like a long time ago, we would just like, we had a group of friends. We would hang out all the time party a lot and do yeah. like crazy shit. Yeah. Um, and then, so we ended up like coining our crew, the heroes. So, okay. and we all had nicknames. So there was like, <laughs> there was Blazer, Rob was D'Artagnan. Uh, who else did we have? The Business, Totem. And I was given the name Scorpion Rose. And I, you had, the thing is you had to be given a name while you're in right. the, the crew, right? right? So our buddy Blade, Michael Barian, if you know who that is, he, he, sounds familiar. he played in a crap load of bands too. You definitely have played yeah. with him or seen him. Um, so he gave me that nickname Scorpion Rose because my last name is Rosario, so Rose. Yeah. And then how he came up with Scorpion, I don't know, it sounded badass. Yeah. And it I was works. just like, let's work it. And f true story, a bunch of us ended up getting tattoos of our nicknames. So oh, on my thigh, amazing. I have a scorpion with a rose <laughs> on its tail. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That is so cool. All right. Next question, last one. This gets a little deep, but it's fun. If you could bring back anyone, anyone uh, from history, from the past, if you could bring back anyone to have a drink with, who would you bring back and why? Probably Prince. Prince? Yeah. I, uh, I, it's funny. I've, it's not like I can say I've been this massive fan my whole life, but there's something about him and all his songs are just so beautiful. I love his voice. So I like to sit down with him, have a drink, and just have him sing to me all night. It's a great answer. Super high notes. Oh, that's a great answer. Touches my soul, man. There you go. All right, you passed. Here is your gift. This is from us here at the Beer Club. Oh, sweet. Thank you. And I threw in a little extra something because I know you love beers and, and all sorts of different brews. Oh, dude, thank so you. you got a little brush there. Sick. Oils, we got comb, so oils. And you know what? I am actually very, very low on all my stuff. So this is perfect. Now you're in the club. All now right, dude. Stuff. Well, hey, it's been fun. Appreciate you taking time dude, out. Dude, thank you for having me. Appreciate Where it. Where can everyone find you? And, and Instagram, Facebook? Uh, Instagram, Eternal Death Slayer 3. Facebook, Chris Rosario. That's it. That's where I'm at. All right. There you go, guys. For the beer, Chris Rosario. <laughs>